bond valuation chapter so if you don't understand at the moment right now just remember that one when economic condition weakens bond prices decreases right and corporate expansions decline and you know that why because their future projection of the sales decline so they don't need many workers many businesses many many uh, you can say that franchises to open the businesses they will be um, you know they will be declining their expansion sales fourth when economic conditions strengthen you know what happened so when economic conditions strengthens what happened there corporate needs of the funds start rising they will be issuing more bonds because they need more money so in that case corporate expansion going to be there and what is the managerial uh, managerial implication here is that if you see that the economic conditions are strengthening by the bond because price going to rise or if you have the bond don't sell it right any question tiffany oliver lancelot eja rujie sapyan okay okay let's take 10 minutes break and then we start uh, our discussion on risk of international bond let me stop pause the, the recording here we will be resuming our recording after 10 minutes of break okay class welcome back after the break okay now let's talk about the risk of international bond we talked about the international bond its features and and now we talk about the risk so like others we have credit risk which means the uh, the borrower may not be giving back our money we call this default risk or credit risk then interest rate risk so which is what if interest rate rises because we already negotiated to fix our interest rate and what happened if in you know uh, during this long term or medium term interest rate rises so we lose opportunity to earn more so interest rate risk like other bonds this the same potential for value of bonds to decline in response to rising long term interest rates the unique about the international bonds are exchange rate risk which is which are not in domestic uh risk of the bond because interest rate is are going to be received in terms of currencies that are issued but when you convert the foreign currency into local currency you experience one more risk for exchange rate risk so this is unique to international bonds because in addition to all the risk that are also inherent with the local issuance of bond one extra risk that you need to bear with issuing the international bond is the exchange rate risk so which is uh, it represents the potential for the value of bonds to decline because the currency denominating the bonds depreciate again the home currency so if you receive the interest rate in that currency in which bonds are issued and what happened that currency goes down so when you convert foreign currency into local currency you will receive less your home currency so in that case you experience one addition risk called exchange rate risk so liquidity risk is that when time comes to pay the creditors the amount they don't have cash readily available so it represents the potential for the value of bonds to decline there is not a, consist, a consistently active market for the bond as well plus what if 
you want to sell that bond and nobody wants to buy it. This is also called liquidity risk, right? So two kinds of liquidity risk associated with the issuance of local and international bond. One is when times come, you don't have cash available. You have, you maybe you have, you are profited, you are a big company, but right now your cash is stuck for two months or maybe 15 days and the time in between you have to pay back to your creditors. We call this liquidity risk. Plus the person who, are, who, who has bought your bond, when he wants to sell the bond, nobody wants to purchase it. So this is also called liquidity risk. What is liquidity? Liquidity means ability, how quickly an instrument can convert into cash. Now we have the example of international bond market. So we have the example here, the impact of greed prices on the bonds. So in spring 2010, we already witnessed that the Greece experienced weak economic conditions and large increase in the government's budget deficit. So their budget deficit was 300% of their GDP. What does it mean? It means a nation who just wake up and go to jobs and just earn, do not consume anything, do not spend anything on them, just work hard and all this you know, income they pay back to their loan holders or uh, sorry, yeah, to pay back to their loan, three years required to pay back to their loans without eating, without consuming anything. So this is huge. It means your government is about to default. So when they experience weak economic condition, their deficits start rising. And now what happened? It concerned other European countries as well. How? Because Greece was also using Euro as their currency. So the, it concerned spread to other countries like Spain, Portugal, Ireland that had large budget deficit as well. So if all of the sudden from the, EU, from the EU, European countries or European Union, the a number of countries started to default on their payments. So what happened to all the Euro? What happened to the value of Euro start decreasing drastically? So it affected Germany, which is, which is the developed country, which is the most also you know, having large reserves and all the stuff. So this causes in May 2010 to support Greece to, to not to collapse or not to default. And what happened? The European Union requested IMF to provide loan and, you know, restructuring the loan to the Greece and to make it credit uh, credit ease so that it can survive on their on its feet. Otherwise, if breach collapse, it causes or it makes easy for Spain and Portugal and Ireland to collapse as well. Right? And this will be a catastrophe in credit world of the European Union. Now the question is up till now we're talking about the loans why companies go why company go out to other countries to issue their bonds to require loans short term loans money market long term loans medium term loans credit market and then long term loans in like in, in terms of bonds bonds are always long term right more than 5 years and now why countries go to other countries stock exchange to issue their shares so number one motive is many investors purchase stock outside the home country. Like why Alibaba go to US stock exchange or New York stock exchange to list Alibaba over there? Why not in China? Why Tencent go to New York stock exchange to list its company? Right? So many investors, because many investors when you go outside to list your shares, it means not only Chinese, but other can also purchase your shares. 
and why they purchase because of the profit if your company is good not only chinese but all other europeans russians you know indians indonesians americans they want to purchase your stock right your stock price is rises it means people have confidence in you in your product in your management as well and of course you will benefit more you will get more chances to expand your business in other countries as well and then recently firms outside the us have been issuing stocks more frequently now the first part is everyone is going to us to list their stocks and now us firms are also going to other countries to list their companies in other stock exchange or issue stocks in other countries why because us people require more return on stocks of course so when if all the shares are you know kept by the us investors they require more return on the us uh, 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 on their investment on their stocks they push the management to work hard to you know go for more risk to produce more to earn more what if their investors are indonesian or indian and and all others maybe their required return is low a little bit lower lower than us uh, you know uh, holders us investors why maybe when they convert from us dollars to their local currency they will have more return so that's why their local return is now based on two returns company return and exchange rate return right so maybe their required return is low so in order to control their cost their equity cost or their share cost they go to us firms are going outside of the us to issue their shares any question oliver pga lancelot sapian all clear no no okay so this exhibit is basically the comparison of the stock exchanges of the world biggest one so you see we have argentina only 57 billion dollars market capitalization and over here only 111 companies are registered in australia you see close to 2000 and its market capitalization is 1 trillion and 298 billion dollars so look at that brazil chile greece hong kong hungary japan mexico there are their market capitalization which mean number of shares multiplied by market value of shares these are the number of companies so the biggest one is us look at that 19 trillion 664 billion us dollars and over there close to 60 uh, close to 6000 companies are registered in new york stock exchange look at the size of the stock market over there so that's why everybody trying to move to you know big companies trying to list themselves to the us stock exchange or nasdaq so that they have a wide variety of 